Hello and welcome to another video tutorial of working with the 2D Radar Builder. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create advanced 2D Radar systems without ever needing to write a single line of code. And you do this using the 2D Radar Builder editor window. Now, this version of 2D Radar Builder uses something we call a resource root to store uh, image assets that you don't necessarily need when you're actually building out your uh, game. So those are stored in this resource root here and are stored in a folder called Diamond Core, which sits under your assets folder. If you're ever, uh, if you ever delete this folder by accident, there's no problem. You just reload the um, uh, 2D Radar Builder editor (DLL) and it will regenerate this Diamond Core and the resource root. Now we're just going to go ahead and select this 2D button here and click Create. And that will give us our 2D radar. And as you can see, it's currently using this example radar uh, sprite here, which is stored in the uh, resource root. So this image used for the radar is not in the project. Instead, it's in the root. We're going to go ahead and replace that with something else. All right, next thing that we're going to need to do is that we want our radar to track something. So let's just create an empty object here drag it out. Let's call it uh, thing to track. And we're going to give it a tag enemy. And then we're going to tell the radar that we want it to display a blip in the radar that represents the enemy that's in the scene. So we simply go over to our blips area and increase the number of blip types by one. Click the power button to set the blip to active and then set the tag of the object that we want to target. So we want to find all the objects in the scene with the tag enemy. So we're targeting those. And we want it to be a sprite. If we select mesh, then the blip will be instanced as a sprite. It will fall back to being a sprite. Now we're also going to want to put this particular blip on a layer. Now we do this because our render camera here should only be rendering uh, radars on a particular layer. So we want our render camera here to only render our radar which is on the layer radar UI. And we also want our 2D radar to be on the layer radar UI so that it gets rendered. Now you can either set the radar itself to be on the layer or you can just set the child object which is the designs child object on the layer and leave the 2D radar on a default layer if you want, depending on what your particular situation is. Now, what I'm going to do is go to my designs area, and as was explained in the previous videos, the setup for the render camera is the same. You simply drag in your render camera, and by default, the system will search for the main camera in the scene and use that as the camera whose position would be fed to the render camera. All right, so we could actually just head back to the blips area now and um, design how we want our blip to look. So how do we want the blip that's going to be representing the enemies to look? I think we should go ahead and give it this E sprite here to represent the blip, E for enemy, and then give it the default sprite material. And leave the color as is, and then we go to rotation and scale, open out that fallout, and set the scale of the blip to be something like 1.0.1. All right, and that should be it. So we could go ahead and just run the scene now. And the default functions actually put this radar in the bottom left. Now, if we grab this uh, thing to track here and we just move it, we can see that the tracking is happening correctly. Now that I've shown you how easy it is to set up your 2D radar, I'm actually going to be going over into a completely built scene, which is your exploration scene, and showing you the advanced settings for the 2D radar and how you can use them to improve your game development workflow. So, 
let's go ahead and find that exploration scene all right and now what I'm going to do is simply go ahead and run this scene and give you a walkthrough of what this radar is doing so this particular radar is using a compass now that compass was set up quite easily with the 2d radar builder so what happens here is that as you can see we have north here we have east here west and south now north will always be facing the to the positive z uh, axis which will be forward north will always be facing forward regardless of where the player actually uh, rotates and the same is true with the center object here and also this radar fan. In order to do this, what we did was that in the 2D radar builder here, we set three rotation targets. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off these rotation targets. I'm going to remove them all. Now, as you can see here, the rotation's broken. Now we can do this at runtime, which is really handy. This means you can actually uh, increase the number of rotation targets at runtime to script and set your rotation targets. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create three rotation targets. And they're rotating nothing, as you can see here. Then I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to target an instanced blip. However, there's no name there, so what do we want to target? And I'll set that after I actually set the object here. So we want this center blip here, which is representing our player, to always face forward. We don't want to be rotating, looking around us and seeing the blip rotating the way it is. So we actually want to freeze that rotation. So what we're going to do is that we're going to drag in the player here into the this object area here and then say that we want this blip whose name is player as you can see here so we're going to write in the name of the blip so now it's rotating the player proportional to the thing that it's tracking and all that does is it makes it uh, makes this rotation freeze. Now we're going to do the same for the um, well something similar for the the compass here and the uh, radar fan. So we're going to go ahead and jump to the other two here, and we're going to set these up really quickly. So we want what objects to rotate proportionally proportionally or inversely to what other objects so what we want is that we want the compass mask and the radar fan to rotate inverse to the player now as soon as I put that in you could you see that uh, the north is where it's supposed to be now if we go ahead and we drag in uh, the player to this slot here, we can see that the fan is now where it's supposed to be. So that's how easy it is to set this up. Now some of the other functions here are the camera, the camera settings which we've actually I already have covered and next the scale settings now I'm going to run the scene again to show you these new scaling settings now if we turn on use local scale then what that means is that we can actually grab the designs object and scale that and have the radar scale However, if we select visualize, we'll notice that the tracking bounds have not scaled proportionally with the radar. So what we do, we select link here, which will link the local scale to the tracking bounds. If we do that, we've now increased our tracking bounds, giving the blips more space to move around. Now we can turn this off by delinking 
here and turning off use local scale which will move the radar back into its correct scale however we also need to reset the uh, tracking bounds here we can either set this back to one or just click link which will link it back and what this means is that now we can actually change the radar diameter while keeping the tracking bones proportional now if we turn on ignore diameter scale what that means is that the for these particular settings 0.3 or uh, let's say 30 percent of the uh, an extra 30 percent of the diameter of the radar here will extend into the bounds of the screen here which we probably wouldn't want for this particular radar so we go ahead and then we turn that off so that we always have the radar where it's supposed to be and we can go ahead and set that back to one now that covers the advanced settings for the scaling we've already gone through positioning in the previous videos those remain the same and we've quickly gone through the blip settings now one of the things that uh, were added was the scale by uh, scale by distance and upgraded scale by distance function which you'll notice when you're actually running the game another thing that was added was the pan function so you can actually move around the uh, space of the radar so if we go to our scenes here and go to UI control and we run this particular scene here and then we go ahead and then we click the uh, pan button here we can actually move through the radar itself we can move through the x y and z axis of the 2d radar which is quite interesting so if i was to select this particular 2d radar here and go to my designs tab and say i want to change my tracking bounds you may notice that even though the uh, tracking bounds seems to have passed a particular area or actually the inner culling zone seems to have passed a particular area the object doesn't get culled you may see something like that happening and that basically indicates to you that well the object is still out of reach because it's either um, too high or too low that's either uh, way below uh, let's see here 100 units in world space so it's either above 100 units in the y-axis or below 100 so it's either uh, something like a negative 120 or even negative 101 would mean that as soon as the tracking bounds passes the blip it won't be called just yet but it will be so that basically indicates that the object has still not yet entered that area all right, so we're going to set that back to zero here and then uh, turn on auto here, which is a, a nice uh, example we added, which shows the auto scaling of the blips. So as I explained in the previous tutorials, you can use scale by distance, which means that the blips will scale um, based on their distance from the center of the radar or the center blip okay so that covers the functions for the 2d radar builder system so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video when we start covering the new functions for the 3d radar builder and the pro radar builder